Okay, hello everybody. Uh, my name is Tomas uh, Janák. Uh, I'm from UCBL and I've been a software developer for Piper. Uh, my background isn't really mechanics, but rather computer graphics and computational geometry. Uh, so I've been dealing mostly with the, with the purely, let's say, geometrical issues uh, of all those transformations we are doing. Uh, so everyone has told you now how we get uh, all those targets. And I will talk uh, a little bit about uh, the actual uh, interpolation method that we are using kind of under the hood to get the final position for all those, uh, for all those points. So, yes, so on the input we have some control points, some meaningful uh, points on the mesh, just a few of them. We have some target positions for them that kind of defines uh, our nonlinear deformation that we want to achieve. But now we need to interpolate this deformation for all the points of the human body model to get the scaled model. So uh, we have done uh, early in the project uh, uh, a survey of methods uh, to, to solve this kind of problem because, of course, it's a, a kind of a common, a common problem that has been solved many times. There is many, uh, many possible methods to do this. Uh, we have the data survey, which of uh, those methods available would be suitable for the purposes of scaling the human body model. And uh, the method we have selected uh, is uh, Krieging, uh, which is something uh, some of you will be probably uh, familiar with. Uh, so, uh, yes, in comparison with all the other methods, uh, it has uh, similar results for scaling. Uh, it has a smoothing property and uh, it's relatively fast for those large mesh meshes that we are uh, dealing with. Uh, so, uh, in terms of theory, I will not talk about uh, that too much because it's a very well-known method. Uh, in the documentation you will find links to papers that will explain all the theoretical details behind it. All I will say at this point is that uh, it's an interpolation method that uh, estimates uh, a given random function, which in our case is usually the displacement of the control po or of the points of the mesh that we are transforming, uh, based on the covariance of uh, the known values of uh, of this function, which in our case means uh, the displacements in the control points. Uh, the result is uh, statistically the most likely uh, values in the in the interpolated points. Uh, so, what I will talk more than, than the theory is uh, what are the, let's say, technical benefits that you get from uh, using Piper and our implementation of Krieging. Uh, so, I will start by probably the biggest problem, which is, uh, well, the size of, uh, size of the problem. Uh, so, numerically speaking, the interpolation is obtained by solving a system of equation that is uh, size of number of control points uh, times number of control points. Uh, so it's not a problem for if you have just a couple hundred points. Uh, however, it becomes a problem like a couple hundred points like you saw on the previous uh, slides where you have just those control points coming from the scalable model. But then you, for example, can have an application where you want to use some whole surface as a target. So like the brute force solution would be take all the points from the, from the surface, use them as control points. But at that point you, you arrive at uh, tens of thousands of control points, maybe even more. And so if you want to create a matrix that is size, uh, like let's say 40,000 control points times 40,000 control points, uh, you'll simply not be able to do that in today's PCs because you will not be able to allocate that much memory. Uh, so that is a practical problem that we uh, had to deal with. Um, so yeah, first, credit where credit is due. Uh, for solving the, the equation, we are using the Eigen library, which is an open source library. It's currently maintained very well. It contains state-of-the-art uh, solvers, uh, so it's fast. So. Uh, that part was dealt with. What we had to do only, uh, what we had to deal with, was uh, uh, the memory issues. So uh, we have uh, developed a, a spatial subdivision technique for subdividing the problem into smaller pieces. So what we do is we take all those control points we have and uh, we divide them uh, by boxes until we get uh, small subportions 
of uh, just a few thousand control points per box, and we solve those separately. Um, apart from uh, removing those memory issues that we have, uh, this also has uh, also makes sense from the performance point of view because solving uh, two uh, two linear system uh, is uh, is faster than solving one linear system of twice the size because of the quadratic nature uh, of the problem. So, um, so that's in a nutshell. That's a, that's how we did it. We simply subdivide everything into boxes, uh, solve it separately. Of course, there are some uh, uh, issues. How to mainly how to ensure continuity on the boundary of those boxes uh, because that's not uh, implicitly given. Uh, I will not be getting into details about that, just uh, we have some kind of a solution for this. So hopefully you will be able to read about it in an upcoming paper, if somebody writes it soon. And uh, uh, yeah, so th uh, here I have just a few examples uh, that I measured on a regular laptop, uh, where first is I used uh, the whole Piper model's uh, child scan, which has 10,500 control points. So I've been able to do uh, uh, accruing using all these control all these points as control points in a half a minute. Of course, with increasing the number of control points, uh, the timing grows uh, kind of rapidly. Uh, however, you still this is just you know just to prove the point that we can really do accruing of pretty much any number of control points. Even like this, I tried with the half a million control points. You gotta wait for it, but. Uh, if that's what you have to do, you are able to do it uh, with Piper. Uh, the last, uh, the last example is just to, uh, just to note that uh, the implementation is uh, well parallelized, so you can you can expect uh, reasonable speed ups if you are if you have a powerful computer at hand. Um, so that's uh, that's this part uh, that we managed uh, to solve. Then uh, another problem we have been dealing with is that uh, like the basic formulation of Krieging uh, uses uh, uses Euclidean distance to to describe the the covariances of the of the displacements, uh, which can lead to some uh, ugly artifacts that you can see on on this image here. Uh, what I did here was uh, I take this source uh, source control points in white color, move them to these blue positions. So basically, I shrink the waist of the of the model. And you can see that I don't have really any control points on the arm here. So what happened here is that this control point was uh, very close to the points uh, on the arm. So as it shrinked, it also attracted all the points from the arm because the distance is very short there. However, the topological distance is actually quite large, like it's all this. So you, you don't want this to happen, right? You only want it to shrink the waist. Uh, so this can be solved by replacing the Euclidean distance by uh, some kind of a surface distance. Uh, the concept is illustrated on this picture here, where, for example, we are measuring uh, a distance from a point on the on the right uh, right foot. Uh, this is the distance field to all the other points, and it grows from blue to red. And as you can see, it increases as I go along the uh, along the leg up. And uh, for example, for the points that are uh, on the on the other foot, even though the Euclidean distance is quite short, the topological distance is uh, is very very large. So you can see it's pretty much the same color as the top of the head. So when you apply this kind of distance on the Krieging, you get a result like this, where you really get just shri shrinking of the waist and uh, the arms remained untouched. Uh, so so that is good. Uh, of course, there are some limitations, as always. Uh, probably the biggest problem is that uh, this uh, this distance is defined on the surface, and there isn't really an easy way to extend it on the on the inner part of the body. So, if you want to scale not only the skin but also the skeleton, uh, what you usually have to do is uh, uh, scale the skin using the surface distance, and then use the skin as the target for a second round of uh, of the cridging, which of course means some additional computation and some additional time, uh, and the computation of the of the surface distance itself takes a few seconds, but uh, it needs to be done only once uh, for a given set of uh, source control points. So you compute it just once, and then you can play it with your targets, and uh, it's stored in the memory. So it's not a big limitation. Uh, another tool uh, that we have in our in our toolbox is uh, what is called the nugget effect. 
so as I said, the Krieging interpolation is governed by the covariance of the points. And uh, of course, the like, basic uh, assumption is that the variance uh, in the control points is zero, because you know the values. Uh, what Nugget uh, allows you is to set some non-zero variance in the control points. So basically, allows you to say that you are not completely certain that the values you have in the control points are correct. You just, like, they are kind of correct. And uh, so this allows you to uh, basically violate the target that you have set uh, a little bit. Uh, in practical terms, it allows us, it's kind of a smooth, smoothness parameter, uh, but uh, we have found out that it's very useful in uh, many scenarios that we've been dealing with. Uh, namely, as I've written here, when you are combini combining uh, multiple targets that aren't necessarily coherent with each other, uh, because, uh, for example, you often have measurements measured just on the skin, but you don't really have measurements for the bones. And then, uh, hopefully it's visible on these images like here, uh, on the left I didn't, uh, didn't uh, add any nugget and I shrink the, shrink the chest of the model. And uh, the ones with the better eyes of you can see that uh, what happened here is that the ribs uh, penetrated basically the skin because I used the skin as a target, I also used the bone as a target, because maybe I had some other measurements set for it. Uh, but those two targets weren't really uh, aligned with each other. So what you can do is uh, say that, uh, okay, I will not follow this target so precisely, uh, I will allow the transformation to violate it a little bit. Uh, so then here is, a, here is an uh, image when using some nugget, and uh, you can get rid of issues like this. Uh, of course, you can also notice that uh, the, the, final, the final breadth here of the, of the chest is a little bit wider than on this image, because the target got violated. You, uh, you weren't able to shrink it as much as you wanted to. Uh, if, if that's what you wanted to, if you wanted really that, uh, that narrow of a waist, uh, you could maybe say, I don't want, I want the skin this way, this is the correct skin, so I will not put any nugget on the skin, I will put the nugget only on the bone, and then the skin will be maintained while the rib cage will shrink a little, uh, a little more. So there are uh, kind of all kinds of possible uh, combinations, which are more for you to find out what's, what really suits your purposes, but uh, the tool is there to use it. Uh, the notion, the name automatic nugget that I have written here is uh, we have implemented an, uh, a way to automatically set the nugget based on the, based on the displacement of, uh, in the vicinity of each control point. So if, if uh, we basically check if the control point is moving in a significantly different uh, direction than all the other points around it, and if yes, then we should put a high nugget on it because there are bound to be some problems like this. Uh, I will show it later in the demo. Uh, so as I said, there are, there are many possible uh, scenarios to use the, cr the Krigin tool. Uh, you could group them all into, well, well, when we're talking about scaling, you could uh, group them into two main groups of, uh, of uh, scaling workflows. Uh, the first is basic rigging, or as we like to call it, sparse, uh, because you have j only a few control points. Uh, this basically means you will use directly the control points you have, uh, probably obtained from the scalable model that everyone showed you before. So you have just a couple hundred control points. You don't really need any optimization because it's uh, going to be fast. However, uh, you can't really expect uh, a very good, uh, a very good result unless you have a unless you have a very well defined target, of which we will also show you later. That if you tailor the target directly to your model then you can, get a, you can get a good result even with the sparse creaking. But otherwise, uh, what's more, um, uh, I'd say, comprehensive, uh, comprehensive tool is what we call the creaking with intermediate target, where basically you scale the skin separately and you scale the bones separately, and then use all the points from their surfaces uh, as, uh, as the control points uh, to do the final transformation. 
Uh, this has proven uh, quite uh, useful for us because, uh, as I said, you often have you often have target, some targets for the skin. A lot of the measurements uh, anthropometric are measured on the skin, but you don't have appropriate uh, measurements for the bones, uh, or vice versa. Uh, there's a there is a lot of uh, parameters you can play with the nugget. Uh, there is also a parameter for decimation of control points, uh, which is also done automatically. That uh, you don't need to. You don't need to, sometimes if you do just some local transformation, you don't need to use all the control points, of course. If I, if I just change the arm, I don't need control points on the legs. So that is dealt with, so that is as fast as possible. Uh, this way you can also use the surface distance I've been talking about earlier. Uh, and, uh, well, figure out uh, your own, uh, your own uh, workflows, I guess. Uh, here's just a glimpse of the of the tool. I was planning to show you uh, a demo, but we are running a little bit behind schedule, so I think we will uh, we will skip it. Uh, also, Erwin showed you a little bit before. You have the option to show the show the preview of the skin target, show the preview of the bone target. You can uh, do the decimation and uh, show the show what control points remained after the decimation. You can play with the nugget. And uh, yes, uh, so uh, this is this is what I was planning to show you live. Uh, there's uh, there is one more parameter that um, uh, that we call association with bone, association with skin. Uh, so since we have these two separate targets, uh, you need to be able to say if these control points should be used to modify the skin target or if they should be used to modify the bone target or if they should be used for both of them. So uh, you can also set it uh, in, the, in the user interface. Uh, so uh, I'm sorry I'm shortening it a little bit, but that's how it is. Uh, so if you have some uh, practical question about this, we can solve it later. So just, just to sum up, uh, we, have, uh, uh, we have this uh, Krieging interpolation tool in Piper that, is, uh, that allows you to solve problems of uh, theoretically arbitrary large uh, number of control points. Uh, we have methods to reduce the number of control points further. We have a way to reduce these artifacts caused by the uh, Euclidean distance. Uh, there's a lot of parameters to play with. Uh, it might be overwhelming a little bit from the beginning, but everything is documented. so. Uh, so you can play with it and see what's uh, the best for you. Uh, the next step that needs to be done now is to test it with as many real applications as possible. And of course, we would be very welcoming of any feedback that you can give us so what proven to be useful for you, what proven to be useless for you, and uh, things like that. So thank you. And now I think Anissa will show you some uh, practical scaling. <laughs>